Hello everyone, welcome to Coffee Cup Enlightenment. Today I'm going to talk about how to be motivated. And before I can uh, begin to answer the question how we can become motivated, it first needs to be noted that the one that wants to be motivated, that's the conceptual self. And um, this this uh, birth of the conceptual self wanting to be motivated originates from the conceptual self first beginning to make its judgments to the world. If you saw that these judgments that were projected onto the neutral world were coming from the conceptual self and not coming from you, then no unmotivatedness could be born. But when you don't see this, when you identify with the conceptual self and its judgments, and you you assume through your unobservantness of it that these judgments are you, that you're the one that make that's making these judgments, then. Um, corresponding unmotivatedness is born once the judgments are being projected onto the world and the neutralness of the world is blocked from your vision from these emotions and the emotions uh, become to be perceived as coming from the world and when you experience this unmotivatedness emotion which is born out of the unobserved judgments of the conceptual self then uh, the conceptual self then comes in to be motivated to overcome the un- unmotivatedness emotions. And it's a, it's a very funny game that goes on. Uh, this whole process is universal with all emotions generated from unobserved judgments of the conceptual self. It is not you making the judgments, but until you recognize this, corresponding emotions will continue to be birthed within you and these emotions will continue to be be perceived as coming from the world Um, you will be blinded from seeing that they come from unobserved judgments for if you did see the judgments as not from you as coming from the conceptual self then no emotions will be born And these emotions that I'm talking about have nothing to do with states of being. States of being are separate. States of being arise from self-evident reality. They are prior to any judgments being imposed to the world. Um, Until you begin to recognize this process of observing the conceptual self within you and seeing that it is not you and observing its repetitive judgment patterns onto the world and noticing how corresponding emotions are born your discernment between states of being and emotions will not be there Um, you'll perceive emotions as states of being but they're not, emotions are, are generated through identification with the conceptual self they have nothing to do with reality. Um, you know, another word for it is just pure illusion. Um, the reason why this word, and it might seem like a bit of a harsh word, uh, illusion, the reason why it's used is because it has absolutely nothing to do with reality. Um, if you were to ask 99% of the world where do emotions come from, they'll automatically say it comes from people and situations from what they do they don't do what they say don't say what happens and what doesn't happen but this isn't the case it comes from um, not recognizing and being able to see that these judgments are are not you they're they're a continual repetitive pattern Uh, they come from your conditioning from your upbringing they're encouraged from your upbringing and they just keep repeating themselves over and over again and until their witness is not coming from you then they keep repeating themselves over and over again and and it's amidst you're not seeing the conceptual self as not you 
this is where the corresponding emotions continually repetitively be built, become born and 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 when they're born they're also uh, seen as coming from the world which is not true they come from the unobserved uh, conceptual self when you see the conceptual self no emotions are born so this is how to be motivated is witness first the one that wants to be motivated see if you can recognize and see within yourself that this is a conceptual self activity going on that has nothing to do with who you are and then um, you can you can bring in awareness from any angle you can do it from looking at the one that wants to be motivated start from there or you can also start from observing the the repetitive judgments being made by the conceptual self to the world start by bringing in your awareness there or you can start by by bringing in your awareness whenever you experience emotional activity emotions to be born uh, within you and this is again not to be confused with states of being which are neutral they're just uh, a reflection of um, the self-evident world that is which is also who you are uh, but emotions uh, yeah they 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 feel like a nudge that's that's a way to sort of describe what emotions are they 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 nudge you and push you around um, can say that they don't generally feel comfortable but that's a judgment um, they just, just probably the most neutral way to describe them is a nudge is whenever you experience an emotion so if you bring in your awareness and and see that this emotion was first created by the judgment which was made not by you but by the conceptual self and if you bring your awareness every time you experience an emotion to do an investigation instead of just doing what 99% of people do and assume that it's coming from a person or a situation and retaliating to that person or situation like a stimulus response animal you can um, experience the emotion and then see that this this came from the uh, conceptual self making a judgment and it's amidst this seeing this is what causes this identification in that moment it is in that moment of seeing that this identification occurs there's a space now between you and this emotion because you have seen its cause you have seen its origin as coming from the judgments of the conceptual self and there's a lessening now with your fusion with it with your amalgamating with it and you might feel a slight release in this moment as the emotion is experienced and and as you see it as coming from the judgments of the conceptual self and this then um, contributes to any future judgments being made or any future emotions being made through your identification with the conceptual self it lessens its strength for the next time it happens it's all good to while you're nice and relaxed to learn about all this stuff which you might be doing right now as you're watching this video but true learning comes from when you wait for these emotions to arise within you this is the really where and pretty much where only where this identification occurs you've got to wait for the emotion process to occur within you um, for it to be experienced to be born for the identification process to happen and then when the identification process happens it's through your seeing the conceptual self's activity while it's exposed and not dormant when the emotions are generated and not uh, dormant or subsided this is the time where this identification occurs not when you're in a state where there is no uh, conceptual self activity going on uh, and there is no emotions being born from your identification with the conceptual self 
Um, so yeah, this is very important to recognize. Uh, um, if there is something within you that wants to avoid all these states, that's the conceptual self as well. So you can start by observing that. Um, for some, this may, may be a 10-year blocker for staying stuck in the conceptual self. For you perceive it's you that wants that doesn't want to experience all of these things. You are just a silent witness that is not affected by anything, by any emotions generated and any judgments generated by the conceptual self. You are the silent witness. You are unaffected and can never be affected. And if there is something within you that doesn't want to, um, is, that wants to avoid these emotions generated, that's the conceptual self as well. So start with that. Whatever it is, whatever conceptual activity is going on within you, be alert and see if you can notice it. It can manifest in many different ways. Um, and the telltale sign that it is conceptual activity is that it keeps on birthing corresponding emotions. It keeps on birthing these nudges. So, um, and that's what I'm going to during these uh, next series of videos I'm going to um, bring light and awareness to these subtle um, conceptual activity within you so when you notice them within you uh, you then bring this space between you and this activity and your identification with it begins to lessen and then the, the corresponding emotions that are born out of identification also begin to lessen and when this all all this lessening process happens you begin to see that the world is actually neutral and this is the true purpose of these videos is um to bring about the return of your perception of the neutral and self-evident world that is um, the world always is neutral and it can never not be it's only blocked from your vision when conceptual activity is being born and it's not from the conceptual activity that blocks it it's from your identification with it so uh, conceptual activity is neutral and innocent it has no ability to block the world to block the world's neutrality um, your identification with it only pulls your your <clears throat> your focus away from neutral reality you can you can maybe explain it in this way to the right is neutral reality and to the left is conceptual activity so if you're looking at the conceptual activity and focusing on that and continually identifying with that then you're not looking to the right and seeing the the neutral self-evident world that is so it's by using conceptual activity to see hey I'm not that and then this returns your vision back to neutral reality when you see you are not that this is probably just another way of explaining it when you see you're not you are not that I'm not that then it drops away and what's ahead of you is self-evident neutral reality so that's another way of sort of explaining it either left or right or what's in front of you use what's in front of you which is the conceptual activity uh, and then you'll see that it's actually a gift. The more you actually wait for this conceptual activity within you to arise, because you can't disidentify with conceptual activity while it's dormant. You've got to wait for it to surface, to come to the surface. Then when it's exposed and it's in the buff, then you witness it. And through witnessing, you see that I am not that. I am the one that's witnessing. And when you see that I am not that, it drops away. And your vision is now unobscured. Un, uh, and when it's not obscured anymore, you'll see that reality is already neutral. It never was not. So, um, yeah, so how to be motivated? See that the one that wants to be motivated is the conceptual self. See the judgments of the conceptual self that generate unmotivatedness. See the unmotivatedness is generated from the judgments of the conceptual self. 
and see that the conceptual self then steps in to be motivated to overcome the unmotivatedness emotions. What a game. It's, 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 this is just one aspect of unmotivatedness and then this same principle applies to all aspects of conceptual uh, activity. One by one witness them until there is no longer one that wants to be motivated and there is no longer judgments being produced that generate unmotivatedness in the first place because you just witness it. The one common denominator to all this whole principle is you which is the witness. It doesn't do, it doesn't have a way, it just sees. It is silent, it doesn't have any criticism or judgments about what it is seeing, it just witnesses silently with a smile. And that's, that's the true aspect of who you are. This is true freedom. Um, you use the very things that bond you to some extent, which is this conceptual activity being identified with. You use it to witness it and then you become unidentified with it. Um, all conceptual activity, again, is neutral. Um, and you'll see it's neutral when you observe it and witness it and see it's not you and then it drops away um, anything that drops away must be neutral that doesn't return anymore there might be sometimes within uh, I know from my experience there might be a shadow of this um, one, one, one that wants to be motivated or the one that wants to be strong it might still have a shadow um, skeleton structure still in the background but eventually even that may collapse um, I know within my own experience uh, when I began self inquiry uh, several years ago that there's some structures that have totally collapsed uh, and there's some structures that have a, a shadow um, background still to them uh, that, that uh, continually remind me occasionally um, of their prior existence they may pop up once every six months or every few years. Um, but it doesn't matter that they do pop up because I witness them. And, and um, some structures, there's still some structures within me that um, still seem justified and still become identified with that my awareness still has not yet um, been able to see. And, and that's fine as well. Um, there's no rush. And, you know, when I do see it, I'll see it when I see it. And I do the best I can when I can. And, and that's all I can do. Everyone's doing the best that they can with their awareness. So um, if there's something that's beating you up for not doing the best you can, that's the conceptual self again. So you can use that. Um, for me, I pretty much don't have any more self beat up in me. I, I used to have a lot of it. Um, and, and that was one of my first things that I did many years ago. I observed the one that uh, self beat up. And I saw that that was the conceptual self. That wasn't me. And that's pretty much non-existent now. Um, there's still a little bit of a frustration structure that exists within me. Um, which still await, is awaiting for me to be seen. Uh, for me to see it. And for it to dissolve. But um, when it comes to the greater majority of self beat up, that's that's pretty much gone. Um, um, so yeah, um, so that's so look out for my next series of videos. I'm gonna individually bring light to these subtle um, conceptual activities that happen within us that are common. Um, they're very subtle, um, and we're gonna um, and because, through me talking about it. We're going to bring awareness to it, and um, I'm, and I'm going to encourage you to see the neutrality of it, and 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 see if there's a potential to by you witnessing this conceptual activity to see if there's a potential for it to disappear, maybe for it to lessen, and then maybe eventually disappear entirely, and then see how easy life is that there's nothing going on, there's no more things to deal with anymore, there's nothing to do. You just experience life as it is and it's neutral. Um, spontaneous right action occurs, spontaneous um, occurrences, serendipitous occurrences occur more frequently in your life 
when there's no more of your focus on this conceptual activity because you're in alignment with the intelligence of the universe and this is how the whole animal kingdom uh, um, lives when there's a tsunami the animals have already gone several days to higher ground before the tsunami even arrives um, and that's because they don't live they don't have a, a mind which to become identified with which takes away their focus and blocks the intelligence of the universe so they're in total communion and consistent communion with the intelligence of the universe which they are also part of they are not separate from they are the universe um, their essence is the universe and they are not separate from the intelligence of it so the entire animal kingdom is in its evidence you see it in everywhere in animals um, um, a dog smells fear um, because um, they don't have language they don't have conceptuality but they can feel the energy vibration that fear generates and it's a very um, nudgy feeling and they sense it and they just want to bite you when they um, when, when they feel that um, uh, babies still haven't um, you know delved into the conceptual uh, world yet and, and they feel everything as well um, everything in their world has not become conceptualized and um, they don't have language yet and concepts so they're um, more as in tune as the animal kingdom is when it comes to feeling so if someone's in another room arguing or their conceptual selves I should say are arguing with each other then um, they feel that and uh, you know it usually makes the baby cry uh, so yeah, I'm going to look, as, uh, talk about in uh, the next series of videos the subtle ways of this conceptual activity and how it creates a loop of um, striving to be something. But this striving was birthed first out of the judgments of the conceptual self, which then birthed corresponding emotions and then birthed the conceptual self to strive to fight against what it created. But ultimately, what you can really say what you created, but that's not really true either, because it's you haven't seen it yet. I'm only saying it in that way. There's nothing personal in that. Um, so you didn't really create it. If you could see it, it wouldn't happen. So it's not personal. If you did see it, then it collapses, it dissolves, and it no longer happens. It's not personal. So, um, yeah, by, by talking about it and uh, encouraging you to see, look out for these things, you'll notice it can make a massive difference in your life. It stops the repetitive activity going on, stops the emotions blocking neutral reality, and, and life becomes so simple and so easier. Um, the measure of how much awareness you are gaining is how much ease you experience in your life. The more ease you experience... The less drama and emotions, this becomes your measuring tool um, to experiencing self-evident reality, which is neutral. Thank you.